Hello, this is Bind VR. So today is a follow-up on my original Quest Games Optimizer video from February 4th, 2025. So a month ago, at the beginning of February, I published my first video on Quest Games Optimizer. And so I shared uh, some of the parameters or settings that I was using a month ago f to record and to play uh, the games that I have on the MetaQuest 3. Now, um, when I published my video, I think it was the following day or the same night, I don't remember, uh, one of the developers from Quest Games Optimizer reached out to me via email in French. Uh, they guessed that I also speak French and uh, I also speak Spanish, by the way. And so uh, we spoke, we communicated in French via email and uh, they said thank you for sharing a video on YouTube about Quest Games Optimizer because now more people get to know about it. I'm spreading the word. And second, they recommended that I lower some of my capture settings so that I have a, a better experience with the gameplays that I record. Uh, it's true that I was pushing too much some of the video capture settings. So here in this video, I want to uh, correct, adjust, clarify, elaborate on some of these settings and other things that I want to add in this video. So uh, what I want to clarify, first of all, is that if you, I want to clarify that the settings that we find in Quest Games Optimizer for each game is not, this, is not to be confused with the video capture settings right here, okay? So for the video games, you have individual uh, settings. So let's, let's say I go to Batman, edit. And now here for Batman Arkham Shadow, you can see the settings for the game itself. These settings are going to be used by the game to use uh, the um, computing resources of the MetaQuest 3. So how the game is going to be using the fixed foveal rendering, the GPU, the CPU, the frequency, and the resolution. And here you have predefined profiles that the, that the developers of QGO have set for you and that you can use uh, right away. Uh, now, these are the settings for the games themselves, how the games use the hardware of the MetaQuest headset. However, this must not be confused with the video capture settings. This is only for the capturing part, right? The capturing quality or the, uh, the recording quality inside the MetaQuest 3 or the MetaQuest 2, whichever one you have. So in this case, I want to clarify some things here. Is that first of all, originally a month ago when I published my first video, I was using a uh, 100 megabits per second of compression quality, which was too much. And for the frame rate, I was using 60 frames per second or 60 FPS. That was also too much, which is why some of my games, but not all of them, were stuttering, lagging, bugging, crashing even. So for example, Arizona Sunshine 2 was the worst one. That was the one that crashed the most, stuttered the most. And so, um, however, Vader Immortal, Batman, Creed, Rise to Glory, and even Dungeons of Eternity kind of worked fine with, uh, you know, 100 megabits per second of compression quality and 60 frames per second but I was still probably pushing my MetaQuest 3 too much, which is probably why the fan was going crazy at times. Anyways, uh, I just wanted to, to say that now that I've been testing these specific settings for the past month, uh, now I have good quality in all of my gameplays. And so this is what I want to share. So now I recommend uh, if you want to record in 4K, you have to choose here 16 by 9 aspect ratio, 3840 by 2160, which is 2160p, which is the same thing as 4K, 60 megabits per second for the compression quality or the data bit rate. And for the frame rate, will uh, I choose 30 frames per second. You can also try 48 frames per second, but that is up to you. You have to test. For me, 
for the games that I play and that I have, uh, 30 frames per second works the best. Now, um, I also want to clarify something else. This is for playing. So these settings here is to play the game at a specific resolution, uh, specific performance. And this is the capturing quality when you when you record or capture your gameplays. However, you also have to think about uh, the um, uh, when you're going to be editing your gameplays or your videos inside a editing software such as DaVinci Resolve version 18 or 19 or CapCut or um, some other editing software such as Adobe. Uh, I think it's Adobe Premiere, correct me if I'm wrong. But anyways, um, in the editing software, in the master settings or in the predefined settings, basically you have to match the uh, capture, uh, you have to match the resolution in the master settings of the editing software. So because I use uh, DaVinci Resolve version 19, in the master settings when I open a new project and I'm going to be editing a new video, like for example when I edit this specific video, in the master settings I'm going to choose 3840 by 2160 which is 4K because by default it is 1920 by 1080 which is 1080p and I don't want it to be 1080p, I want it to be up to 4K. So I choose 3840 by 2160 in DaVinci Resolve 19 and I match the frame rate which is now 30 frames per second. In the past it was 60 so I had to choose 60 but now in DaVinci Resolve I, cho I choose 30 frames per second. Now there's something else that I want to clarify. After you edit your video in DaVinci Resolve version 18 or 19 you're gonna go to the deliver phase or the uh, the rendering phase uh, to output or to um, to export your video in the render uh, in the delivery phase for the rendering settings you're going to choose well I choose the custom settings I no longer choose the um, the YouTube settings I choose the custom settings and I match, of course, the aspect ratio and the resolution, which is 3840 by 2160. And I match the frame rate, which is 30 frames per second. However, however, for the bit rate or the data rate, it is not going to be 60,000 kilobits per second. It's not going to be 60 megabits per second. It's going to be something different, and this is what I want to clarify. So now, now I have to clarify something else. I just want to clarify that uh, 60 megabits per second is the same thing as 60,000 kilobits per second. So in DaVinci Resolve, it's going the bit rate or the data rate is going to be, uh, you know, 60, um, 60 megabits per second is equal to 60,000 kilobits per second. 100 megabits per second here is 100,000 kilobits per second in DaVinci Resolve or anywhere else, anywhere else in any other software because sometimes uh, the, the, com the, the bit rate sometimes is presented as megabits per second or kilobits per second. And I just want to let you know that 100 basically 1000 kilobits equals to 1 megabits okay uh so 100 um 100 megabits per second is the same thing as 100000 kilobits per second okay that's the conversion if you want to convert from megabits to kilobits that's how it is or you can google youtube or uh, you can even use the, the Windows 11 or Windows 10 calculator and it shows you, it converts, uh, you know, from megabytes to, um, to kilobytes, from megabits to kilobits to, uh, you know, whatever. It has all the conversions in the Windows calculator or you can go on Google and convert on Google as well. Anyways, 
in DaVinci Resolve 19, um, the for the that for the bit rate, it's it's going to be double the frame rate or even triple the frame rate, depending on the codec. So I'm gonna come to YouTube. And on YouTube, I, I've been watching videos on how to export high quality videos 4K for YouTube. And so the best video that I personally found so far is this one, which is from Matt, who is Matt Johnson. And he, um, he gives props or he gives a shout out to Casey Ferris. Casey Ferris uh, specializes uh, on uh, DaVinci Resolve and he's a guru in this field or in this niche, if you want. So uh, I recommend this channel as well. But Casey Ferris is the one who supposedly uh, shared uh, how to, you know, which bit rate you should use when you render your video in DaVinci Resolve. And so if you watch this video, how to export 4K video in DaVinci Resolve 18 for YouTube from Matt, uh, in this video, he shows you how to do that. So I'm not gonna show you here because he already does the job. So I don't want to repeat the same thing he does and he's doing it better than I would. So I recommend you watch his video. He recommends that if you're gonna be exporting or rendering using the codec H265, then you should uh, perhaps triple the bit rate. And if you're gonna be using H264, which is what I use because I'm, I'm following the recommendations from YouTube. YouTube recommends that you use H264 for the most compatibility. If you want people, uh, people's devices, because not everybody has a high quality computer. Some people only use phones. If you want your video to be compatible with as many devices as possible worldwide for the YouTube platform, YouTube themselves recommend that you use H.264 and that you use, uh, you know, the settings that they recommend. Uh, you can look for it. You can use AI to find out what YouTube recommends, or you can look on youtube.com in, um, in the help section. <clears throat> or you know what? I will be putting a link in the description about this. So now, um, in this video, uh, as I was saying, Matt recommends that you go watch uh, Casey Ferris uh, for the bitrate. He shows you in this video. Okay, so now this is for that. Now, I want to clarify one last thing. I want to clarify that um, if you're going to be recording a YouTube short, you should, you could use these settings and then go in DaVinci Resolve or any other editing software and then crop your video, you know, during the editing phase on your computer in the editing software. However, that does not work too well if you are capturing a MetaQuest 3 gameplay. It might work if you use a smartphone or a iPhone and you capture a video and then you transfer that video on your computer and you edit that video using DaVinci Resolve and you crop that video to capture what you want for a YouTube short. That may work, but it doesn't work well with the MetaQuest 3 headset because a YouTube short is vertical. It is not horizontal. Um, basically, what I'm saying is that a YouTube short is a 9 by 16 aspect ratio, which is 1080 by 1920. So let me clarify this point here. Most monitors and most TVs today, uh, that's not the case for every single monitor, every single TV, every single screen out there, but most of them are 16 by 9 aspect ratio, which is basically just like this, this window right here from Quest Games Optimizer. It is horizontal, and uh, that's the 16 by 9 aspect ratio. 
So when we talk about 1080p uh, video, it's 1920 by 1080. When we talk about a 2K video or a 1440p video, it's this one right here, 2560 by 1440. And when it's a 4K video, it's 3840 by 2160 or 2160p, which is 4K. However, for a YouTube short, you have to choose 9 by 16 aspect ratio. So what I was saying is that in DaVinci Resolve, you can change the aspect ratio and the resolution and all of these settings and fix it in DaVinci Resolve so that you can create a YouTube short out of your captured video. Either it's a, a iPhone captured video, a, you know, Android app captured video, a DSLR camera video, or uh, another type of camera video. However, for the MetaQuest headsets and for gameplays in particular, it doesn't work well. What I recommend and what I found that works best for me for a YouTube short, even though I haven't posted a YouTube short on my YouTube channel yet, but I do, I have created YouTube shorts on my computer. It's just that I did not upload to YouTube yet. But so far, the best results for a YouTube short is the 9 by 16 aspect ratio, which is the inverted of 16 by 9. You see 16 by 9, 9 by 16, because YouTube short is vertical and non-YouTube shorts are horizontal, right? So a YouTube short is this one, 1080 by 1920. And this is, what's go this is what YouTube recommends so that it is mostly compatible with all devices, especially phones, because most people use their phones to watch YouTube shorts, which is why YouTube recommends that you use this for a YouTube short. Now, I also recommend that if you're gonna be recording a gameplay video and you want a YouTube short, out of your gameplay video using the Quest Games Optimizer that you use the cropping guides because the cropping guides are going to crop, right? You're gonna see black bars. It's gonna crop your gameplay or your, your what you see in your headset with black, uh, black rectangular, you know, a vertical uh, rectangle and you're gonna see precisely what you will see in the end product or your rendered video or the video you will be editing in DaVinci Resolve or any other editing software. So this I find is the best, these are the best settings for a uh, YouTube short. And if you don't want to record a YouTube short, then don't use the cropping guides and go back to 1920 by 1080 or 2560 by 1440, which is 2K or 1440p or 3840 by 2160, which is 2160p. All right, so that's it. That's all I wanted to uh, share. Thank you very much, and stay tuned for the next video.